folks, welcome back to Bremsstrahlung. So today I really have a treat especial for you. Uh, I found something really interesting and at the same time really creepy and let's just take a look what it is. So a few days ago a good friend of mine came by and he was like, hey Manu, I think I found something interesting for you on the flea market. And it turns out it's uh, this thing here. It's a Cold War era, like 1970s, I would say, Geiger counter. Um, it's the Swiss Army standard model. It's also by a Swiss company, Landis and Gier. Also other armies use them, I found out, like Austria, for example. So it's kind of like a big, bulky, um, yeah, Cold War style Geiger counter. Here's like the display. You can put in your batteries here, even though the contacts are totally corroded. Yeah, just looks like an army box. The thing with this thing is though, I mean, normally a Geiger counter does not have an active radioactive source built into it. But this thing does. They did this sometimes that you have like a check source to check your Geiger counter if it works. And the creepy thing is this source is so strong. This is the most radioactive thing that I found so far. And yeah, I'll just show you. It's it's really insane. It's crazy. Okay, so this here is what I, I mean. The thing is, uh, the Geiger tubes are down here. There's even like this flap you can close to. Like, if it's closed, you only have a gamma. And this way you also get betos to count them. And the thing is, there's a mechanical arm in here it swings up the check source, so um, maybe this way you can see a bit more, even though it doesn't help anyway. Look at this, check source on. Well, it's basically it's too strong for my Geiger counter. I don't know how strong it is exactly, because my Geiger just goes up to 70,000 counts and then it goes back to zero again. And that's really creepy. I never found something that was like too strong for my Geiger counter. I thought this one was quite like tough, but yeah. <laughs> so just to be sure, it's not my Geiger counter that's like being broken or doing weird stuff. Um, it's always good to have like a second and a third option to check. I got my second Geiger counter out and also the muon detector, which is also two Geiger counters. Check my muon detector videos if you're interested in this one. And as you hear, if I open the check source, all three of them will detect radiation. Yeah, all three are beeping, so it's really something strong. Let's take a closer look. So the point here is, um like we found out, yes, it's an active check source. They did this sometimes in old Geiger counters to be able to check if the device is working or not. However, what I don't understand is why to use such a strong check source. It's really not necessary. And I'm, the, the point is, I didn't really check if the Geiger counter itself still works because the contacts are re really corroded and I just don't want to mess with it too much. I'm, I have a lot of respect. Uh, for this thing here. It's really strong, it's dangerous, it's highly radioactive, so yeah. What we can find out, however, is uh, what kind of radiation it is. If it, is it alpha, is it beta, is it gamma, maybe it's some kind of a mix. And from there we can maybe take some clues what it is exactly. Since I do not have a, a good like scintillator or I, I do not have a possibility to do gamma spectroscopy, We'll just have to try to figure this out old school a bit. So first thing, which, okay, disclaimer, I already found it out. It is a beta emitter, but just to show you this, this is a piece of um, iron or steel. It's a bit rusty, relatively thin. So a strong gamma source should penetrate this here. I can show you this with a strong gamma source in a minute, but let's open the beta source here. See, this really stops it almost completely, even though it doesn't even fit exactly. It's 
So, I can show you on a gamma source here quick. This is my uh, good old Swiss Army compass. The Swiss Army really had something with radioactivity going on, I guess. <laughs> well, look, point is, this is really quite strong too. I can put this iron above it. It still picks up something. Because here we have radium inside of this thing. And radium is a really strong gamma emitter. So the gamma rays are able to penetrate this metal thing here. The beta rays from this check source, however, they're not. They're not strong enough. One more thing I would like to show you is uh, like it's quite directional the whole thing, the source. So if I open this in front, of course. But as I go to the side, if I go further away. They go quite far. Actually, this must be a strong beta source. I think there's a lot of energy in these beta particles that they can fly this far. Ah, oh, here I am. Sorry, I'm going out of frame here a bit. But when I'm over here also... Yeah, there's a bit. But I can go like behind the device, on the side of the device, on top. Here we go. It is quite directional. So that's a good thing. We just have like this electron fountain spitting out electrons out here. That's what's happening basically. One more little experiment we can do um, is um, to see if the radiation interacts with a magnetic field. Because beta radiation are electrons which have a minus charge and alpha decay also has like a plus charge. It's all, it would also work with an alpha source. But yeah, we'll, we're really sure that this is beta here. Um, I don't have like the perfect magnet for this experiment. It would be better to have like a simple one with one plus and one minus side. I only have these round ones here. But if I move the magnet through the flight path of the electrons that are hitting the Geiger counter here, you can hear a little difference. It's, it's weak, but you can hear it. Now there's more electrons hitting the Geiger counter. There's a little less, I have the feeling. Something is changing, so the electrons that fly straight, more or less straight, to the Geiger tube here are like um, disturbed by the, the magnetic field of the magnet here. That's interesting. I'll just place the Geiger in front of it for like at least a minute that we can get a, a decent count per minute uh, value. Um, so just before we head on uh, to try to find out what kind of uh, element it could be, I wanted to show you how my Geiger counter is too weak to measure this. Like I turned the speaker on, otherwise the sound would be really annoying. Turn it on, the check source, and counts per minute are rising. Oh, no. I think the Geiger counter has some startup issues. Yeah, now it's going up. It will go to like about 70,000 and then back to zero. Um, yeah, just some words before we go find out what it could be. If you find something like this, really, really be careful. Have a lot of respect. This stuff is dangerous. It's, yeah, I mean, I can't even measure how strong it is. Maybe I'm not sure if it's in all of these Geiger counters or if this is a specific model. And, it's really creepy and look the point is I would love to open it up and show you the insides I would love to keep it to have like a, a nice pure beta source but I thought about this for a while and it's it's too dangerous it's too strong I don't want to have this around like the place where I live and towards the end of the video I would like to show you how to handle radioactive waste basically if you find something oh look now it went back to zero so it made a circle the Geiger counter yeah I also want to like talk about and maybe show you how to deal with something like this what you should do if you have something like this and you want to get rid of it I mean it's not a good idea just to throw it in the garbage or in the forest or something don't do that please 
um, we will find out how to deal with a government ag agency that's responsible for that. So I did a little bit of research, like just on Google, Wikipedia, the usual uh, stuff, on what kind of check sources were popular or are still popular today, what kind of like radioactive elements can you actually buy as a check source. Then I like broke it down, what, which ones of them are like pure beta decay. And I'm 95% sure what we have here is uh, strontium-90. I'm quite sure about that. But st yeah, still I can't really prove it. I'm curious, maybe the government guys and girls can tell me something about that. We'll find out later. Um, just what I found out uh, about strontium-90. It has a half-life of 28.8 years. Um, the energy level, like the average, not the peak, the average energy level of strontium-90 is 195.8 kilo electron volts. That seems quite strong to me compared to other stuff. Um, what happens here is the strontium-90 after 28.8 years will, well the half of it will decay to yttrium-90 which has a very short half-life of 64.1 hours and a very high energy level of uh, 933.7 kilo electron volts for the beta particles. So I think this explains why it's so strong. The strontium decays to yttrium, which is really strong. Strontium itself is quite strong as well. The good thing here, which kind of like, um, yeah, calms down my nerves a little bit, is that the yttrium will decay to zirconium-90 in the end, which is stable. So we will not have some crazy decay chain going on for thousands of years, spitting out radon gas and whatever other stuff. So this is a good thing. This like yeah, calms me down a little bit. So let's just take a last look uh, at the thing before we pack it up for the government to go pick it up or I'll bring to them. I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, well, the flap here, I think it's really just this uh, gamma beta thingy. This here is just like hollow space for whatever. I don't know. It's not radioactive itself. I checked it. I really checked the thing for contamination, like if there's any dust or so coming out of it. Apparently there's not, thankfully. But uh, yeah, maybe you can see this here. Yeah. Oh, this way. That's the model if you're interested. Hope you can see it. And then this switch, the second switch here is also quite interesting to flip the display. It's it's really fucked up. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that's the box of doom, so let's get rid of it. to call three times already and it seems that they take really long lunch breaks at the government so it's like 2 30 in the afternoon now i hope they pick up now let's find out seriously ah uh, i think i'll just write an email Writing an email to the government because they don't pick up the phone. Da, 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 da. Let's see how this turns out. Well, the email thing actually worked uh, and kind of fast. Like I got a reply after an hour, very friendly mail. And um, my guess was correct. It's strontium 90. Cool. And he writes me that, yes, my guess is correct, uh, in those devices they used a 10 microcurry or a 370 kilo becquerel strontium-90 um, source. So we know that for sure now. That's uh, cool. 
Um, he also writes uh, that it's good that I wrote him that you should uh, dispose of these devices as proper nuclear waste. So, um, yeah, very friendly. Um, he just wrote me like, yeah, he'll be in my town on Friday if he can come by with the car and pick it up. So, no liquidators in hazmat suits, it's not that spectacular. But still, I'm very happy that I could solve this and got rid of the Box of Doom. Uh, yeah, if you find something like this, just really think about if you want to keep it or not. If you don't want to, there's a government agency for you, probably, in most countries in the world. I'm yeah, not sure about that, but uh, try to talk with the government, they'll probably know what to do. Yeah, I think I'll end the video. Um, the box will be picked up on Friday, I don't think it's that spectacular, so let's end this here. Thanks for watching, uh, th this was really fun, also really scary, but really interesting. I don't hope I'll find more of that kind of stuff, but you never know what you stumble upon, and yeah. Be careful folks, and I hope to see you for further videos soon. Have a nice day, bye.